far-flung holiday. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. At Liverpool Airport, 737 Charlie Foxtrot is coming in for an engine refit. The plane must be ready for a flight to Nice the following morning. The engineering manager is John Higginbottom. We've got about 14 hours and we're hoping to complete the engine change approximately 10 hours. Uh, we, we really do need to be handing the aeroplane back at least one hour before the departure time. Overnight, the old engine, which has flown something like 30,000 hours, an equivalent of being in the air constantly for three and a half years, will be replaced by a two and a half ton brand new one, costing three million pounds. Once fitted, the new engine will consume two tons of aviation fuel per hour and will be expected to last an average of 20,000 takeoffs and landings. The engineers have almost finished Charlie Foxtrot's engine refit, but the plane can't fly until it's had a safety test. Liverpool Airport have asked us to uh, carry out ground power runs in this position. It's totally unacceptable. Uh, we've got a reasonably strong wind and it's blowing directly up the exhaust pipe. Potentially, it could surge the engine. It's ridiculous. So we, we've asked them to, uh, to move to a new location, and I've just been told they're refusing. So they're not having a jet blast across the apron. So you've got to put some other idea. Okay. In an emergency meeting with the airport director, John finds a solution. The taxiway will be briefly closed, and the plane moved to another position where the engine can be safely tested. Having that uh, small delay there, the position of the airfield uh, running area, it will cause us um, a slight delay, which is. Annoying, really. Starting off. Moments later, the new engine is put through its paces. With the last checks complete, John is satisfied. Brakes off, mate. We have a serviceable aeroplane. It's a serviceable aeroplane. Very, very pleased. After 12 hours graft by the Liverpool engineers, Charlie Foxtrot is ready to fly. In Mallorca, Janie and Bluey are getting to know each other again. And so far, it's all going well. The joy that I have, the fortunate thing I have, is that he's not a daft dog. He is an intelligent dog. So that's the joy I have. And the response that he gave me when he first saw me, I just couldn't could never have dreamed of such a response. Because I did all his training when he was a baby and he's remembered everything. It's like there's no time has gone past for him. It's really super. I really, really was lucky. Hello. <laughs> oh, look at him licking his little tail. He's great with other animals. Look. Oh, look at the little baby. Look. I'm trying to sniff his tiny bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the comparison. Oh, look at that. He's the size of his head. Look. The dog's in Luton. Figgy not. <laughs> Figgy not. He's good with cats and everything, to be honest. I mean, he plays. He's a big boy, and so that's sometimes intimidating, you know, chickens and cats, because he's so big, but he certainly wouldn't do him any harm. In a few days, Janie and Bluey will set off for the UK, where, if all his papers are in order, Bluey will be allowed entry under the new pet passport scheme. The Glasgow flight to Luton is arriving late, causing a knock-on problem for passengers who want to fly on to Barcelona. Jet flight from Glasgow is delayed, and we're all waiting for a connection to Barcelona. And um, we've we've all been round to the check-in to say, look, we're delayed, but we're going to be here. We're just waiting in our luggage, and they're not interested. Um, they're not. They said we've got five minutes, literally, to check in, and it's going to take longer than that. It's already taking longer than that to get our luggage. The Glasgow flight from has been delayed to here, and there's people wanting to transfer, go straight on to Barcelona, but they haven't got their bags. So we can't check them in unless they have their bags. Do you want me to? I'll run ahead. Are you all right? Yes. yes. Just follow mummy. Lynn Harris and her son Freddie are off on a family holiday. They run on ahead to see if they'll make the flight in time. Well, we don't really want to delay the Barcelona, but we're going to keep it open if, 
you know, a few more minutes. So. Sorry, Thanks. There's no way we can get on. We've been delayed from Glasgow. Yeah. I feel like it hasn't left yet. Yeah. They're actually now, they've got the number of things and they're pushing back. So they won't now. It's, it's out to the captain. It'll make the final decision. If I could do it for you, I would do it. Could you ask him again, please? Is it possible to ask him to get down? I'm ever so sorry. You'll have to get the test now. I don't find this very helpful. I just contacted my dispatch office and unfortunately it's too late to accept them for travel. But you know, the Glasgow was late in um, and the bath days running on time. So to transfer them to the next one, this was not until like another three hours, you know. I'm just pissed off, basically. I'm really pissed off. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't be saying that. Especially when they knew that the flight was going to be a half yeah, an hour late. Yeah, it's the same airline. It's not it's as if it's a yeah, crossover different. of airlines. They ought to have some kind of a better policy than that when they've caused a delay. Flight. That's what I feel. I mean, yes, you get what you pay for. It is a cheap airline, but I think the customer service leaves a bit to be desired. When you left an hour between no, 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 they didn't even offer us a penny in compensation, you know, for lunch or anything like that. It took four hours to wait. For Graham, it's just a few short hours now until his wedding, and he's having a few last-minute nerves. You see, we're just trying, we're trying to relax, but it's, uh, I want to get the speeches out of the way. Until then. And the wedding as well, obviously. Right, the speech, <laughs> yeah. mine was the same, yeah. No, you'll be fine, Graham. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Quite straightforward. <laughs> You want it in bigger print? Can we ten foot tall? I still want to read it. <laughs> Liz is in the middle of her preparations and is handling the pressure better than Graham so far. I just think he's panicking about the whole day. He started to last night. But, um, yeah, now he just wants me there to know it's there. And he wants to get the ceremony out of the way because he's nervous about doing it. Since we've put the gear on, we feel much more at ease, I think. Playing the part more. Playing the part. <laughs> Playing, doing the part. <laughs> it's hard to believe it's actually happening today after all the preparations and stuff. It's today's the day and then it's gone. And then it's Mrs. Fraser. Oh, That's no good, Graham. No, I haven't finished there yet. No, you've got to show your, your That's wings. Better. <laughs> Good on, Mum. Wings. That's better. Yeah, all fun and games. Yeah. Sure, everything will pay off in the end. Here it goes then. <laughs> Thank you. Bring my car back. <laughs> <laughs> Graham's so keen not to be late that he's setting off with more than an hour to spare. Over at Liz's, things are getting tense. Time is running out, and now there's a problem with the flowers. Oh, what? Flowers? It's OK. Don't worry. I'm sorting it. Calm down. I'm all right. Oh, Calm down. What flowers are falling out? It's all right. It's around the edges keep coming out. I've sorted Mum, will you tell Vicky? Ah! She won't sit still. <laughs> Graham has decided to spring a last-minute surprise. He's hired a stretch limo for the bridal party. Is that what Graham's ordered? I have no <laughs> bloody idea. We're all of us, or just yeah. no? Yeah. Is that... <laughs> We're going to have to pick the dress up. That's what we're going in. Go on. Um, no, it's all of us. I want all of us to go in it. Leslie's sitting there. You've got to go around that side and get in. Yes, there is. Go around the other side. What do you think of the couple of this? Gorgeous. Hello. Hello. Over at Luton, it's Stephen Elwood's last day at EasyJet. He's on the move to another airline to train as cabin crew. It feels really weird because I never thought I would actually see myself leaving and this is my last check-in. <laughs> All right then, thank you, bye-bye. I'm glad they've asked me to do um, a domestic as my last flight because they're so easy to do and um, it's not like looking at passports and documents makes it really much harder. So I'm glad I've got a nice last, last domestic flight. Hello, what's the surname? Famous last words. Stephen has spoken too soon, and a fire alert keeps him on his toes. Hey, everyone, come on. Come on, everyone. 
Let me like a bit of action on your last day of work. Yeah, the main fire alarm systems have gone off in a terminal building. We've got to get all the passengers out, get them around to stand one, but none of the passengers want to communicate. They all just want us to just stand right here and just keep just like congregating around. And everyone in the airport comes to stand like number five when they have to be at stand one. I've told about groups of people four or five times to go to stand one, but not listening. It's for their own safety, and the whole of airside has been um, evacuated now. It must be quite serious. Finally, we've got all the passengers down here. Um, there's another set of passengers all the way right up on the top side. Um, I don't know what's going on, to be quite honest. Despite all the excitement, it turns out to be a false alarm. All over. What was that? An automatic fire alarm actuation. Is that, is that serious? Not really. I mean, serious enough to evacuate the building, but uh, it was just an accidental actuation. People working on the system. For Stephen, it seems a fitting end for the time he's spent at EasyJet. For the, for the last year now, I've, I've been running around like a whippet, you know, sorting people's problems out, sorting bags out, checking people in, boarding flights, and now it's all just about to come to an end. And within the space of an hour and a half, that'll be it all. But I've enjoyed it. I've hated it as well, but I've enjoyed it. Louis is arriving at Heathrow Airport, where he still has to face some checks before the authorities will allow him into the country. Uh, we have to check his paperwork against the dog now. Check his microchip number against the paperwork and make sure everything else has been done. Do this side. There we go. There we have it. Double zero one double seven oh eight nine. That's it, that's correct. Right. Okay, now we're fine. Excellent. So I'll stick them in the envelope for you. And your vaccination cards are there. Right. Super, that's us. Okay. Fair swap. All I need now is the buffer. You do? You've got your lead? Yeah. Hello, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hello. 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 Finally, after two years of planning, Louis is free to go home with Janie. The wedding is being held at a local hotel. One of the first guests to arrive is Katrina with her mum. I knew you would eventually. Mm. How you doing? Hi, lad. Oh, you can wear a seat to come over. You can wear one for mine. Thank, Thank you. Got the car? Liz is using the bride's prerogative to be late, and Graham is getting edgy. She's a minute late. Not on counting, but I just wanted to come in there. Standing around, sitting around. But finally, the bride arrives, and in style. Would you all please stand? I cannot promise you a life of sunshine. I cannot promise you riches, wealth or gold. I cannot, but it's ever true and ever growing. A hand to hold in yours through each tomorrow. I promise to give the best of myself and to ask for more than you can give. I promise to share with you my time and attention and bring joy and strength to our relationship. Completely and forever, I love you. Thank you. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of my love. 
as a token of my love and a symbol of our marriage and a symbol of our marriage to be my lawful wedded husband to be my lawful wedded husband to be loving to be loving faithful faithful and loyal to thee and loyal to thee in living our married life together in living our married life together you are now husband and wife together many congratulations to you kiss for each other round of applause from Eddie <laughs> I thought it was absolutely lovely. Um, it brought back memories of my day, obviously. Um, I think all weddings do every time I go to them, but there's a lump in my throat as well. But everyone's singing, you know, it's all so happy. It's lovely, it's absolutely lovely. The bridesmaids are lovely, and the, well, Liz looks absolutely stunning. It's can't wait to throw the confetti when she comes down there. It was, it was um, walking back down the aisle after we'd been married. It was, it was a very emotional feeling for me. I mean, you knew everyone was there, but you, you just didn't... Just like, look. No, you just... The man and wife now, this is brilliant. Mm, very strange, isn't it? It's the end of the first six months of what's been a demanding year so far. By the end of June, the airline flew its 10 millionth passenger. In the last six months alone, it's carried 3 million people over 12 million miles to 15 destinations. And despite some appalling weather, only one in ten flights have been delayed an hour or more. But it hasn't always been easy to please everyone. Easy. It says easy. It is easy if you get well, here on time. I would say that you've had a drink. I've had a drink. But there is a limit to what you can yeah. drink, sir. Yeah, who says the limit? No me, no you. An aircraft door has to be closed at least 10 minutes before departure to be taxiing down the runway to take off on time. But you... It's an aircraft, not a bus, you see. The treatment I received is well, absolutely well. disgraceful. Well, also, I've just had EasyJet well, saying to me with a nine-month-year-old baby, and you can what, you, well, what do you expect you want. to do? You can stick it and stick it and stick it even more. Yeah, and this is the only gentleman right. that actually held me up the stairs. But for most people, it's been a happy experience. I bless Where's the Yankee what? Charlie. I bless Yankee Charlie. Katrina explored a whole new career on the catwalk, but is currently still enjoying her job charming the public at the sales desk. Yes, I'm going to tell immigration in Geneva and see if they'll Jane yes. has experimented with a variety of hairstyles before finally hitting on one to match her promotion to passenger services supervisor. I'm just coming. Okay, look. Okay, manual braking. Break this up. And half. James McBride spent his working hours flying 737s from Liverpool and his spare time honing up his aerobatic skills. Is that first? Liverpudley and Georgie Hobbs's flying career has really taken off, and she's on course to become one of EasyJet's youngest female captains. Have like a bit of action on your last day of work. Stephen Elwood left for another company, but is so missing his time at EasyJet that he's already planning to return in the future. And Bluey has recovered from his journey and is now settling in well to his new life in England. The hunt for real superstar talent continues tonight as Dizzy Rascal, Charlene Spiteri and Jamie Cullum meet more wannabes desperate to be the next big thing. Must Be The Music starts at 7 over on Sky One HD. Thank you.